You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin, for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. You know, storms have recently been happening all across the, the United States, particularly here in the Midwest, Mid-South, Upper Midwest recently as well. Mm-hmm. And just in the, the last or so storms, really, there was a, a very powerful storm that was just devastating to, for our friends in Missouri, Illinois, Arkansas, and Kentucky, I think mm-hmm. was was hit very hard. So joining us today, the Reverend Andy Toops, pastor of Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Pastor Toops, thanks for being our guest on the Coffee Hour. Well, thank you for having me. Pastor, help us understand the the community of Bowling Green, Kentucky, prior to this recent... Bowling Green is a community of about 68,000 people. We have a major university in town here, Western Kentucky University, and it's a gateway city for the immigration department. So we have one of just about every language and tribe on the on the planet here. And so it's a very diverse community, but it's also a very close-knit community. How does uh, Holy Trinity Lutheran Church and School, how is it part of that community? Well, we serve as a host for a Burmese church and also an African immigrant church. And we are looking to add a Hispanic church just as uh, people that can't afford to have their own building yet and and need a place to worship and we give them our space to use whenever we can work out the time for them. The recent tornado was just devastating to many communities and uh, it, 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 specifically in Kentucky. How has the tornado affected your community and your congregation and school? Well, unfortunately, it caused our school to close because a lot of our kids uh, were in the areas that were decimated. And so they're they're needed at home to kind of clean out what they can and salvage what they can. And so we're closed until the first of the year. We They got an early Christmas break. So it's It's been amazing to watch how the church is just pulled together because about two blocks away from the church is just total devastation. And the church didn't suffer any damage whatsoever, but just two blocks away from us is, is houses that are destroyed and, you know, neighbor part of our neighborhood is just missing. So it, it's it's been amazing to watch how our people have pulled together and gone out there with chainsaws and rakes and shovels and whatever else they can find to help clean up. What is the situation like for for the families of the children at the school? Well, one of our families lost everything. They lost their home. They lost their cars. Well, actually, two families, to be honest with you. They lost literally everything. And the Red Cross is putting them up um, in hotel, but we are trying to provide funding for all the rest of their needs. So, that you know, as far as maybe even eventually being able to purchase a car for one of them. What does this mean for you as a pastor serving your congregation, a school as well. How have you been able to, to, to carry on? I know this, not only are you given to serve as a pastor, but I, I'm sure your family has been impacted as well. But what does this mean for you as a pastor? Well, it's actually, it's very invigorating for me because I'm, I'm the senior chaplain for the Bowling Green Police Department as well. So I've been very busy with, you know, checking on our officers, making next of kin notifications and whatnot all. But my family, I'm very grateful. They all, uh, my daughters and my grandkids live in uh, Tennessee and they are fine and everybody's healthy and sound. And my wife and I are good. Our house didn't get damaged. And so as far as the pastoral role, uh, I mean, I'm, this just uh, gets me motivated because I get, I like being out on the street, talking to people. Being able to help them yesterday was able to hand out about two thousand dollars worth of gift cards from the Lutheran disaster response, and just got hugged and cried on and amen and prayed with a bunch of people yesterday, and it was it was an amazing day. What difference does that make to be able to bring this this mercy and comfort of the Word of God to people at a, at a time like this and in, in this situation? 
the the cool part is is in one of the communities that I was in yesterday, it is a very heavily Muslim population, and yet they were so glad to be a chaplain walk up. They were so glad to talk and and pray and and it was you know I think right now everybody's so dumbfounded and so you know just struck by the devastation that I don't know if they they realize what was happening with them, but it was, you know, they're just walking around dazed and it's nice to be able to just bring them a couple of minutes of peace and comfort and some hope. What do you anticipate to be your next steps? I mean, this has been a, certainly a very devastating storm for much of the community. What do you anticipate to be your next steps as a congregation and those you partner with? Our next step will be getting people have been very, very generous to the church to use this money to go out and help people, and that's what we're going to do. We're, we're, our youth group has been out all week cleaning up yards, and, and we'll continue to do that. We are, you know, our people have been out with chainsaws, like I said before, and we will be out using the, the funding to provide for, you know, giving people gift cards to like Kroger and places like that to get food and you know, they need basic stuff again. They need clothes. They need underwear. They need, but we don't have the facilities and to have people send that stuff to us. And we'd rather let people go get what they want. So we're going to get, provide the money for them to do that and the transportation if they need it. So, Who are some of the partners that you're, you're working with to be able to, to do this work of being able to respond to these immediate needs of the people in your community? Well, the Mid-South District has been great. Lutheran Disaster Response has been amazing. And it's, it's fascinating because the, the churches I've served over 38 years of ministry, all the churches that I've served in the past have responded, and the individual members, the entire congregations have spent money. We've I've heard from people all over the country uh, wanting to help in any way they can. So it's pretty neat. What does that mean to <laughs> to be a part of the Christian church and, and, and specifically, you know, seeing Lutherans step up to to support you in this in this difficult time to be a part of not only your congregation, but the, the body of Christ larger than just uh, your congregation? Well, it's just it's amazing. You know, you I, I've been to a few conventions in the past that were very stressful and very con, uh, contentious and I. You know, you lose a little hope when you see stuff like that. But when when this happens, you see that, you know, the rank and file, the, the people out there every day are just as amazing as they ever were. And, and you know, people who don't have much to give are giving huge amounts of money and time. And and it just it, it makes me very proud to be a part of a church body that can pull together like this. What do you see as the as the outlook um, as people are are cleaning up now and and getting through Christmas? What do you see as that that outlook for a, a little while down the road? Well, unfortunately, like today, the next three days it's supposed to pour rain here, mm -hmm. which we really don't need right now. Mm -hmm. The timing on that is almost impossible. But by Christmas, there will be a significant move forward as far as as cleanup goes and getting people situated and, and settled a little bit. But this is going to be a long-term deal because these communities and some of these neighborhoods are just decimated. And there's a lot of rebuilding is going to be taking place or relocation. And so it's going to be, it's a long-term thing. Yeah. When there, when there's a total loss like that, when homes are, are completely decimated, I, I imagine it's going to take a while to rebuild. But it, it, it sounds like the community is is a strong-knit community and ready to uh, work together. And I'm so glad that, that you have been gifted in ways that uh, you as a congregation, as a pastor, and your brothers and sisters in Christ can help you serve in the in the, uh, the pastor. As we wrap up our time together, anything else you'd like to share with our listeners today? Just to tell everybody thank you for the outpouring of love and prayers and everything that uh, they've been doing for us. And we truly appreciate everything, and the guys have been great. And, and keep it up, because there's lots of people in need. 
Our guest today, Pastor Andy Toops of Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Pastor Toops, thanks so much for being our guest on The Coffee Hour. Thank you. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golsack.